what about running like weird mar weird places like Reddit ads, for example? What do you think about doing something like that? Is that worth the time? Like, would it work? Um, I personally have no experience with advertising on Reddit. Um, but I can imagine that if you sell a product that is like funny, for example, um, a board game uh, consisting of memes or something or cards against humanity, they all, they advertised on, on Reddit like crazy. And I think that really resonates with the people that are on Reddit. But um, I don't know, if you're selling makeup brushes, I don't know if Reddit is the, the right place to go to. <laughs> Yes, makes sense. All right. Uh, what about LinkedIn ads? LinkedIn ads are like super expensive, like $15 for a click. Would it work for e-commerce? What do you think? What kind of products would I sell for it to work? Mm, I see LinkedIn more as a B2B platform. So I have actually never seen an ad for a product on LinkedIn and I hang out on LinkedIn a lot. At least not an ad that was targeted at a person uh, a person like me. But I also think that people on LinkedIn are not really there to, to purchase products for their everyday life, but they're there to make partnerships uh, with other businesses. That's why I say like B2B products like CRM software, ERP software. I think that will work well. But um, people that are, um, products that are business to consumer, I don't think LinkedIn is the right place to advertise. Okay, cool. Um, what about Twitter? Is Twitter dying? Like, what's your opinion on that? I think if you already have a name in your niche and um, you have a high number of followers, I think Twitter is also a good way to put out content. But for B2B, it's like if you're Google or if you're Facebook or Apple, like a big brand everyone knows, then I think Twitter is an important medium. But um, for smaller brands, I don't think so. Because no one will read your tweets. <laughs> you think the platform is going down, basically? Uh, it's not so popular like it used to be? I think so, yeah. A little bit. Now, I would say for other reasons like for sharing news and sharing opinions on what's going on in the world political issues it's still the same but i think the marketing power of twitter has gone down a little so sad for them <laughs> okay um what about um Okay, there's an idea. So someone said that you could send lumpy mail to, to the customers. And lumpy? lumpy mail is like something that, what is inside? And you want to open it. You know, if it's flat, uh, yeah, okay. you're not going to open it. But, and then if it's something like useful, oh, I'm going to keep it on my table. I can't throw it out now. You know, it's like a USB key. I can't throw it out. Let me keep it. And there's your brand name. So could you come up with a few random ideas for us? Like what would you have something that people would keep and then your brand would shine to their eyes every day? Like, what is that lumpy item that you would put? Mm. Okay, I have to look up the word because I don't know the English word for it. Oh, okay. it's basically the same as in German. So, um... Let's say you're a business to consumer brand and um, you're in the makeup industry. Let's stick to that example. I would maybe send out nail files, you know, because this is something that you need, uh, especially as a woman, like all the time. And you can put it, uh, I mean, most of the people have like this little stand where all of their pens are inside and maybe a ruler. So this is something that you can put there. And if you're bored and you're just thinking, of something or your nail broke, you will use that nail file and then you will look at the name eventually and then like, oh, this, it should be a good nail file because of course you, you have to deliver a high quality product. And then you think, oh, this is a really good nail file. What else are they doing? And then maybe they will look you up and buy some of your other products. So I think it should be something that is really useful and maybe not another pen. I never even looked at that logo and I think I have that since two years. So something that people are actively 
using and looking at. This is so awesome because that's what I do, you know, with the with the nails thing. I'm like when I'm like so overloaded with some thought, and I'm like, okay, let me sit and think about it. I open my drawer, you know. Uh, I do that too. <laughs> you do that too. I do that too. That's why that's why I thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, what else? I think USB sticks um, are always a good idea. I mean, they are more more expensive than like a stress ball or something. But this is something that you really use. And I have one on my keychain that uh, was given to me by a brand that I'm pretty loyal to ever since. Because uh, this USB stick saved my life in university, for example, a couple of times when I needed to transfer some some files and I didn't have internet connection. I was like, oh, damn. Oh, yeah, I have my, uh, my USB stick. So... Um, that's why I have positive feelings toward that brand and I could really use it. So I think that's a good thing. Well, that's an interesting thing. You mentioned your university. So when you were a university student and you just walk around, you are a, do you remember any brand like somehow approaching you uh, from somewhere? Do you remember any ads that you've seen or any promotions that they run or there's something? Like, could you um, yeah. Definitely. So um, we always had an event at the beginning of each semester where every student got like a little goodie bag with some stuff in it. And brands, of course, had to pay to be to be included there. But they gave you useful things that you could use for university, for example, um, a ruler or a pen. But as I said, no one really looks uh, looks at a pen, um, which uh, what I really loved was like a little college block. So when you went to university and you forgot half of your stuff because you had to go to the lecture at 8 a.m., you're like, oh, no, I forgot everything. It's like, oh, no, I have this little college block that they gave to me. So um, this is one of the advertising forms. And also this big cigarette brand um, called Gaulois, they came every semester with a couple of people and they had this game where you could like scratch off a lottery ticket and if you had like three times the logo then you uh you won a pack of cigarettes i mean i don't want to promote cigarettes <laughs> it's not really good but it worked like a lot of people started smoking galois because of them wow that is a very very unique way to promote cigarettes like these days cigarette promotions are like so restricted you know it's very hard to even put your brand anywhere this is interesting. Yeah, I was I was also surprised that they were allowed on campus because they have to get permission by the dean and everything. Um, but what they also did, which was uh, very smart, if you wanted to participate, you had to fill out this form. Um, the reason for that, they said, was uh, so you can you can be in the pool of people that can can be chosen for the jackpot, whatever you could win um, travels to the Caribbean or something. But of course, they just want to, your name and your email address. And uh, I always give out a wrong email address because I don't want to get uh, like newsletters and stuff. But um, one of my friends put in his real one. And then he got a newsletter that said, okay, if you put in your real address, like your street address, we will send you a new package with our new cigarette design, whatever. And then he, every three months, he got a package with like one pack of cigarettes from Galois and like the super fancy packaging, and like thanks for staying loyal to us. So this was a pretty good and sneaky way to get all the, the customer data to retarget. Wow, which is very cool. What something else you remember, like in cafeteria or some event that sometimes they have trade shows like career fairs or all these things. Do you remember any products like e-commerce products being around at all that they were suggesting to you at university? Um, I don't know if I can refer to as e-commerce product but there was um, this platform called uh, study drive where students could share all of their notes and all the exams they could scan it and upload it for all the other students to see so people can study better um, and they sponsored a lot of events in our school so um, yeah they built a pretty huge amount of traffic they're now popular everywhere in germany and in every city with bigger universities and e-commerce. But wait, what kind of events they were sponsoring? Like what Sports would events. Basi basically, any event 
that it, I mean, if there was a day where people could donate blood, there was always the, the sponsored by Study Drive. They put flyers on the inside of the toilet cabins. So uh, <laughs> if you take a break, then you can read through it. And you're like, oh, that's actually pretty nice. I could get notes from the previous semester, whatever. Um, so they put out flyers and posters everywhere. Basically, you could see their logo everywhere. So it was so deeply branded into your brain that you automatically went to that website. And who also did a really good job was Red Bull. I mean, of course, they're not an e-commerce company, but they sponsored all of the sports events, like big time. They gave out free Red Bull all day. They had their banner everywhere. They built up like this little fun park for people to participate. Um, and they were also like, yeah, share your story from this event. You will be featured on our Instagram, which people love, obviously, because everyone loves attention. Um, so yeah, they also did a pretty good job. This is an interesting idea, actually, to encourage people to create some kind of content for you. So either participate with your product and then you make a movie of that and, you know, post it on your video feed. This is a very cool idea, but let's say I have a makeup brush. So what would I do? Like what type of videos I would create with that approaching other people, trying to engage them with that? What would you say would be some ideas for that? I think what always works good, I can see that a lot with um, big nail polish brands that they always say like create your own look and then share it and if we like it then we will feature it on our story and um, it doesn't even have to be that those people who use your product and share it on their Instagram, they don't need to have 10,000 followers. If they have 300 or 1,000 or 2,000, that's already enough also because most of the time the people that follow them are really engaging with the contact because they're friends and family. Um, so if they use your product and they recommend it on, on their channels, a lot of other people will see it and like, oh, this looks cool. And maybe ask this person questions like, oh, how long does this nail polish stick? And I'm like, one week. Oh, one week. That's long. I will buy it too. Um, so something where your customer has to be creative and can prove that they know how to use your product and then just um, yeah promise them that you will feature them on your website or at least like it whatever uh, I mean there is software for that so they feel appreciated and think they get some reach for their own channel what about simple products who don't have such a awesomeness in them i don't know some simple nails you know that nobody wants to post on there like what kind of videos would you create for for simple products like that that don't that really is hard <laughs> for them i don't know like some tools that are not really tools but like bits and pieces you know for certain components or something like that and then you sell like a vacuum filter or something like this so how do you like promote boring products and simple products like that is is the video way to go then or what would you say? I think video is always the way to go. It just depends. I don't think you can, you can try to create user generated content, but of course people are not likely to post on their Instagram channel, um, which nails they're using to, I don't know, <laughs> to, to, to put a, a picture on the wall or something, but, in every niche, there are inf in every niche there are influencers, um, also in home and gardening and whatever. So maybe reach out to those influencers and convince them to create content around that. Like maybe a nice video of how they're putting the nail in the wall, and then just write a text like, "These are the strongest nails that I've ever used in my whole life." And then people were like, "Oh, maybe I should buy those nails too." Um, so, yeah, it won't be as exciting, but find someone who already found a way to make that content exciting and who got an influencer in that niche and then maybe reach out to them. Cool. So because or create some... Oh, sorry. Huh? Can I, or create uh, what? <laughs> or create some kind of, uh, of game. Like, games always work. It's insane. Sometimes I see a post um, and then I say, like, okay, post something... Uh, using our product, comment this post, like this post, and then you get the chance to win like a toolkit uh, worth $300 or whatever. And then I see there are like 11,000 comments and there's only one toolkit to win. But people 
are like, oh, there's something for free that I could really use. Uh, and then people get encouraged uh, to use that. So games like this are always a good way, even when your product is a little bit boring. <laughs>